As I have said, I was once a sorcerer. Alas, the magic of Londor is a far cry from the wonders of Vinheim. But I can teach you what I know. Perhaps, more importantly, I believe that I can help tease out your true strength. We pilgrims of Londor are keenly aware that those branded by the dark sign possess something quite special. Then shall we begin? Bearer of the dark sign, let your true strength shine. Be safe, champion of a... Side note, cleaning up this um, area for a scenic shot is kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> different from back here than up close and if you're not catching the drift that's the wrecked um, bridge area where there's a crashed drake um, after that right there is where a um, demon is and that would mean that one there it's not a jump off why that would mean that right there should be pretty trashed up. Uh, side note, they did get the um, three towers correctly right there. Is that the, uh, like, the Abyss Watchers thing right there? That's obviously the Cathedral of the Deep. All the way over there. supposed to be the um, 
arch art trick place. Otherwise, that's San Orlando right there. And Irithil. Which is, I'm pretty sure, how they're trying to portray it. And there's like a ton of pine trees, which would be actually the surrounding entryway to Irithil from um, a nearby gap between them and um, Ferns at Abyss Watchers Keep. Uh, doesn't really matter for this though. that resembles the brand of an undead. The darkness of humanity seems from this bottomless pitch black hole, the gap filled by the accumulation of the universe. This dark sigil will never heal, but there is a tale told by a firekeeper who returned from the abyss and brought great comfort to a bearer of the curse. That's kind of a hint that if there is any amount of me really not liking having this and its effects, that um, I'd be able to heal it through the Firekeeper in some way, somehow. But moving on... But the point is, he gives me this. As he was saying, he is a pilgrim from Londor. Londor being formerly New Londo, which was a safe haven for the undead, for the hollows. A more sort of like reformed sort of land for them. come to find him like this as we see Yuria show up and Yuria seems to talk fondly of him kindly of him sort of but it's also kind of peculiar that she would be here and he's just suddenly dead and Yuria was also a representative of Wando, uh, like the Wando, I should say, which is an interesting bit of a detail, which could imply that he was perhaps hunted down by her, but it could also imply that maybe he experienced 
inspired, like, his amounts of purpose. It's probably behaved like one in actual circumstance. Like, did she just straight up off him? But at the same time, he gives us up to five dark sigils. And then we see a love baby don't hurt me don't stab me in the face <laughs> but um i think that is an interesting sort of detail i think most pilgrims probably accumulate dark sigils in some way as like more hollowed of individuals And then certain, like, um, I want to, you know, I really want to say they can sort of pass it person to person, really. But also accumulate it in some way of, like, um, an ascension of them, of their people. But something I was always curious about is why do they transform? probably the more violent version of their turning into anything. And it makes sense that they would be their form, um, especially if you've looked at um, what the butterflies look like up close. Very notably, the pilgrim butterflies have kind of a pretty wild, crazy, and kind of a grotesque form. It's like really skeletal, you can see like popped ribs coming out of their back or something. It's really strange. I want to say that's probably like, um, a certain destined fate of them under certain circumstances of like, if they're like, hollow. and achieve, like, a transformation. It's probably gonna sound really weird to you, but that, but I say this because, um, they also have the chance to kind of turn into a butter, or not a butterfly, into an angel. Now, a notable detail about the pilgrims is that they still abide by like the same rules of if there's like a certain kind of like will and wants you still like carry on in this world and that is very true with these pilgrims um once there is no more will and wants they sort of pass away now, someone suggested that this one turned into an angel, but I'm inclined to think they passed because they seen the angel, to be honest. It makes me wonder if I can kill that thing. But, um, 
a better look at this thing. Like this. Uh, I think part of one of my sneaking suspicions was correct. And that is to say... There is definitely a tie between the um, Pilgrims and the Pilgrims of the Dark. Uh, um, if you pay careful attention to the wings of that angel, they're like really malformed and they do some kind of weird um, thing at the end of the wings. Like, instead of feathers, it's some. Um, it's something very different. It just sort of flows off itself. And there is another thing that actually does this, believe it or not. It is none other than the Dark Lurker in Dark Souls 2. Its wings do just this kind of nature, but it's probably, <laughs> I guess you could call it a little bit of a high definition kind of design, perhaps. I think that's a pretty fair assessment, in my opinion. But, um... You can assume the pilgrims are basically undead. They've come from Londor. They're mostly dabbled in sorcery quite often of the time. that I think they are related to the Pilgrims of the Dark, quite honestly, in the sense that not only do we see an angel that has a similar wing design to this thing, but we basically get to kill it for their covenant. And it's considering us ascended and closer to dark. Which I almost want to say has relativity to the concept of what is the dark soul of humanity. I want to say that is very deep into the factor of it all. Um, because that has much to do with not just uh, a lot of the game is tending to be about, but it also has to do with um, our dark sign. It, the dark side is literally a suppressed dark soul of humanity with flame to suppress us to make us useful for Kindle, basically by the way of light. If we did not have the dark side itself, we would just have the dark soul of humanity and we would pretty much hollow out is the idea. So then you can half assume off that logic that um, pilgrims that offer you the dark sigil, they're definitely reaching more of um, that hollowed out phase of their being like undead. But something I wonder is if they just plain die because they use up what is their like dark sigils and lose their reason of want and will. Otherwise they don't go crazy and try to kill us. And there have been places where we would see here in the Dragon Heap their uh, shell has bursted and they become like some kind of like a vessel thing to create this whatever you want to call this. It's, a, it's basically an angel but I'm inclined to think of it as the Dark Lurker to be honest. And the thing about the Dark Lurker is it looks like an angel but it does like dark type attacks and performs like sorcery of a variety from pyromancy to duplicating itself in like a splitting kind of way as well 
countless other interesting things, such as, like, um... Sort of like an attack spell that's, like, melee-based. Which is also a thing of sorcery, to be honest. If we're being real here. Like, um, let's see. Like, that's roughly, like, soul greatsword or something. Or magic weapon. Or not magic weapon. Just like the soul weapons, basically. Sort of like what um, Soul of Cinder can conjure up. Like the Dark Lurker could do that. So it basically demonstrated much opportunities of general sorcery at its um, disposal of arsenal in Dark Souls 2. So we can assume it probably had some kind of logical background to go by, but the thing we don't quite understand is where did this Dark Lurker actually come from? And, to be, and what I think is the case, we're not actually supposed to know where it actually came from. I think we're supposed to know what it is and relates and relevancy for a future reference. If we caught that as like a detail and see it here, we'd be able to make the connection back and forth. And it would also add like another layer of understanding things to the game. And honestly, I want to say it actually adds more depth to the lore than we might have originally have taken it to. Um, we've seen um, these pilgrims going towards Londor for whatever reason. And that they were finding out the hard way, the truth, that the fire fades. Now, why were they looking into this? Now, something I wonder is if um, they could relate to the angels already there in Mondor. Like, maybe they could have thought there was some kind of correlation or something. Something we learned from the ashes of this particular stone hump is that she is from Lothric. Like, um, I guess there was like a, in her ashes, the icon for it was like a ring that depicts um, connections. But like, why were they going to Lothric? And what really killed them? And I have a few guesses. Like maybe they sought for a purpose in Lothric by some kind of backstory that we don't recognize just yet. In which case they pro would have, or um, probably denied and passed just like that. Or they were brutally just outright slaughtered and ambushed as they approached. In which case, that would explain why there is a crashed dragon. It was probably sent to actually um, kill them, but they probably actually brought it down themselves to an extent. Rescued Yol. He seems surprised he wasn't dead, is an interesting detail, which tells me if it wasn't the dragon that killed a lot of his uh, companions, that means it was probably the loss of purpose that did it. That they would lose their will and basically give out that way. In which case, he should have been dead also. But it's like he must have just like prayed that there was still something left for him to believe in, maybe. 
and that was probably us when we came along, is my suspicion. probably knew his true value for what he had left was giving us these unlocking layers of the dark sigil within ourselves, making us stronger. quick look and talk for a moment why they should be like why else they must likely be related to the children of, or sorry the pilgrims of the dark That's a really difficult one to answer, as is it's a curious question as to why they even sought Lothric specifically to me. But we do know that the hump on their back means they are bound to likely change. That is uh, like a way to kind of like preserve their changing state before they fully go through with it. But um, if we look carefully, one particular detail that should stick out otherwise is that all of them carry these sort of like um, special lantern staffs and each of them is, uh, they have their heads completely wrapped in really dark cloth. Now, I'm inclined to think that that is, like, the real, um, that, uh, head wrapping is the real hints that they are of the Pilgrims of the Dark. Not only that, it is actually pretty common for Pilgrims of the Dark to be, you know, sorcerers, and honestly, most Pilgrims are actually pretty dabbled in sorcery that we've seen. Like, um, the one near the wedding that also gives their dark sigils to Anri. They use the chameleon spell back in Irithil. Back at the uh, little church we went to. Church of Yarshka or something like that. And we were able to actually attack them in that state. And we learned that they have connections to Yuria as an actual sort of plane of association. And it was to really, um, <coughs> sort of a sneaky plan to give us more dark sigils. Like, Yuria doesn't even mention the dark sigils. She doesn't even mention that you're accumulating them through, um, Henri. They suggest that um, to us that we should wed Henri as their sort of representative and be more befitted as a lord to do their work for the fire. And Yuria wanting to usurp their fire. She basically set you up with everything necessary to do such. But um, she never explains it to you specifically. I like that getting on this. <laughs> and just like stand on it.
so there's definitely some layers of deceit in there. And that has me curious if um, gold has always been an agent of Uria, maybe infiltrating the other pilgrims. And looking for someone like us who would be able to grant their like um, duties full or recognized purpose. Oh yeah, I'm standing on it. What up? Gave us their dark sigils, which eventually cost him his life. So certainly some interesting things to go off of here. But it still doesn't quite explain. Why do some turn into angels? Now, one sneaking suspicion I have is that it's maybe like a layer of their ascension. Like in the way of the dark. How much um, dark sigil they have themselves. Like maybe a lack thereof, or more of, or like, like having more of, that affects their opportunity of becoming such. In the Covenant for Dark Souls 2, the Pilgrims of the Dark, to reach your third tier and to be considered closer to Dark, you had to defeat the Dark Lurker. But it's like, what did the Dark Lurker actually represent? Who were they and what they do? I really think it was a member of the Covenant, to be honest. And I think their goal was to pass on their in like strengthened form of like dark to us through like defeating them or like through a fatal enough kind of like def going through them, kind of like how we pierced Henri's skull with a sword. So I think that could be in some ways related. And I doubt anyone else has made that connection. But um... It really is the main uh, basis of what I was suspecting for this. And it's like the more you think about it and go over like the odd little details, the more it makes sense. It's like um... The Pilgrims of the Dark were obsessed with dark. They had to, like, surround themselves entirely with dark, or it, it was just, like, poison to them. And it's like, these characters also, like, wrap their heads in, like, dark cloth, as if they're trying to, like, not see the light. In which case, they probably like carried those sticks for like sorcery reasons of like finding things or making things more bearable, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the reason some lived and some didn't is definitely to do with the um, Lothrics and whether or not they needed them or not. If you look at them, they look desperate, desperate with attention towards that Lothar castle. But it's like they're all dead. All of them except um, Yule and the two other ones. The one that follows Henri, the one we see at the very, very end. Something I have suspect is the one at the very, very end at the Dragon Heap was probably part of the influence on Prince Lothric himself. 
as it was probably like a partial interest to like um, Pilgrims of the Dark to have like some kind of like hold within the uh, Lothian Castle themselves and also kind of push their ideals of um, what if we never linked the fire? Like, um, Koth originally, like, supported as an idea in, like, Dark Souls 1. Don't even link the fire. Walk away from it. So yeah, we definitely have some interesting things to go off of here. But before we just conclude that like that, let's get into a really more damning detail here. A detail that I feel is a little understated, very hard ignored, like holy crap, why have you ignored this? And it is none other than the simple fact that in Dark Souls 2, the Pilgrims of the Dark Covenant, when you reach the third tier of the Covenant, your reward is none other than a very peculiar armor set. Can you guess what it's gonna be? It is none other than this really bright golden set with a very funny headpiece. Although in Dark Souls um, 2 and 1, it was considerably brighter and described as being originated with a um, land of lands that are with gold and sort of like light magic. But in Dark Souls 2 and 1, it was also more round, like a big old, like, bulb or something, like a giant light bulb. In Dark Souls 3 here, it looks more like the mushroom from the Artorias DLC, Elizabeth. And funny I should mention that, because they actually uh, make a mention of her. Crown supposedly made an imitation of a divine creature of Ulysseal, land of ancient golden sorceries. Xanthus clothing is the mark of a researcher of lost sorceries, and the oversized crown is embellic of their work. Such a curious pursuit is surely nothing to be ashamed of. Is surely nothing to be ashamed of. Is an interesting mention. Now, could it be mentioning that the design and wearing it is rather nothing to be ashamed of? Or could it be implying what they were researching? and their way of life was nothing to be ashamed of, is my interesting question. <coughs> and even in Dark Souls 2 and 1, it's actually very under-mentioned as to what the Xanthus crown actually had anything to do with, but they're, not only did they look different, but their descriptions were entirely different from this one's. Um, they actually mentioned that there was some kind of leader or ruler of um, Xanthus. It was maybe like an odd choice of um, odd choice of maybe showing off perhaps, or it was perhaps. Um, that it's both very odd looking and also awkwardly, painfully bright to look at. And not only did they not 
not mention at all of really of Ulusil as much. They mentioned more so of the Xanthus. Um, in one of them, they mentioned there is no ideal information on what Xanthus actually was or where this even came from. And in another one, it mentioned Xanthus was like a place, like a crown of Xanthus or it's here or something. also like something to do with their work. But um, not one of them was very too definitive as to which was the more correct line of thinking. Is an interesting detail to me. But it seems like all three games have a, a great detail about this. It's not for the more like popular of customs of people, if that makes any sense. In Dark Souls 1, we first find this set in the painted world of Ariamis, which is a place for formal those who don't belong with uh, any sort of place in the world. Which could mean that they were like shamed into living there. But it could also mean perhaps they wanted to live there. Whichever that is. We can't really assume too well. But um, after we defeated the NPC that's Warren, we find they're set on a body just after Priscilla. Like maybe we took their glory and took their own self from near Priscilla and maybe she holds, holds it slightly against us, then we realize. This one mentions of Ulusil. We do actually get some side mentions of Ulusil also in one of the other ones. I get like a sneaking suspicion of something. And that is that the Santa's crown itself is a set comes through Ulusil. a particular line of thinking to that. Now one part of that lies in the fact that Lucille was a city of ancient golden sorceries and light magic. Like if you go there in Dark Souls Remastered and wave your lantern around, you'll find a few things that get revealed with it. as well as like in general like invisible passageways. There is in fact two passageways that get revealed with uh, holding a lantern there. So it is like a land of the light magic and golden sorceries. <coughs> Something that makes me want to try is like wearing the Xanthus crown or like set there to see if anything happens. But, um... We get the Xanthus set in the Dark Souls 2 Covenant of the Pope of the Dark. We get it in the Painted World of Ariamis. Now, something to note is that this piece covers your entire her head still. See something now. It's just a. Uh... Where is it? Just to give an idea. Yeah. 
much completely covers you. It was originally a much more brighter sort of gold color in lighting. And it is also regarded as a set for sorcery in general. Dungeon of all places. 
Now, it could be playing part of the joke that, um, Xanthus is that shunned and frowned upon. Or, it could be playing to the idea that it is actually somehow tied and linked to the abyss and the dark arts. Because, um, in the Urethil dungeon, they primarily, um, act away things tied to the abyss and dark. We've seen Carla, the witch. We also seen, um, Dusk's ring, which, if you get the ring and haven't killed the jailers yet, they will, like, go after you right then and there. A good number, a few of them. So, for, so it is pretty easy to still fall into the idea that it is somehow in tied to the topic. It's, the, it's very information spotty is the real issue. But by now it seems that it has lost its luster. Which almost makes me wonder if I um, compare the Dark Souls 2 one to Dark Souls 1, if it'll also be a little more faded. I just wonder of like certain little details like that. Maybe it'll like give like a better insight. But one detail we also don't know is if it actually blocks out the light. Which I think maybe it actually does. Like it could probably be an awkwardly efficient way of blocking out the light from the head. If we're really comparing it's it definitely is very scholarly of a clothing. The pilgrims also do head wraps and have this sort of like a cloak to them. But it's like all really dark. But maybe this was like an early year more um less obviously the dark kind of approach at it. Kind of like the idea of like um way to have less uh, light right here is to just reflect it or something. Like a uh, common logic to light itself is that it is um, that bright colors basically reflect that dark colors absorb it. In which case, if you really want a lot of dark I look for something that can just that can like absorb it with a lot of investment. You can do something that just reflects it. at the ground here. Look very carefully at the ground here. What do you see? Feathers. A lot of white feathers. It was suggested that Loth Prince Lotharic experimented on angels and angelic like humans. So I think this could be the final piece of the puzzle that I'm really, really looking for. That's to answer a question, why do some of, um, some of the pilgrims turn into angels and why did some turn into the butterflies? And I think this is a very solid, conclusive piece of evidence right here. That Prince Lothric 
wasn't interested in having any further angels into his kingdom. In fact, he was probably against any further angels at all. Considering he experimented on angels, he probably used a similar sort of logic to experiment on the pilgrims that came in to offer their services as angels. And that became the pilgrim butterflies as a result. It was probably something like angels. You want to become the beautiful grace of angels. Why not butterflies? They're also quite beautiful. Ah? 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 And butterflies are also a thing related more so to illusion and magicians and sorcery to an extent. It's the perfect logic. Ah? Uh, I know it's a little bit more of like a hypothesis, sort of a piece fitting thing. And it's like, fill in the gaps. But it's like it makes such good sense because you also see them still serving the Lothric Castle where that dragon and slayer armor was. And you can still see the pilgrim butterflies from here. It's like, why not? They very well could have been the case. My question is, did they leave anything behind from being turned like the normal angels did? Now, I'm thinking they didn't. I'm thinking that was the real result of extreme transformation. Um, if you look carefully at some of the curvatures of their torso, it's like also some of the curvatures of the torso of the body that is left behind that manifests the angels. And like probably a lot of the mass that usually goes into like portraying the angel in their own body. I think that is part of the real circumstances there of their being twisted and remade up. Without in some way, shape, or form, say the prince of Lothric intervening. I think we can safely assume they would have had quite a trek to travel and more than likely die within than we otherwise see them do. Like, there is absolutely none of them in here. Which otherwise would have been, like, them being cleaned up already. Well, let's be honest, anything get cleaned up in this game. I mean, just look at that ro just look at that roof, like... Who left that there, like that? Why would they do such a thing? <laughs> Otherwise, they would have had to go up a ladder. They would have had to go through... Like... A courtyard that's littered with drakes. They would have had to go through a cathedral a bit. They would have probably had to go through a library, although they could just take this um, elevator here. They would have had to <laughs> go through quite a lot of interesting obstacles. This was the area we first had the clearest um, looking at of the pilgrim butterflies. As for why they were here so up close, it is a curious nature. 
but it's curious, but it's most definite that they still had some amount of their power left to cast sort of like magic in that. As for how they actually ended up serving is a curious thing also. As they <coughs> pretty much helped guard this um, pathway and the Dragon Slayer armor that was here. I know the Dragon Slayer armor doesn't actually tell us much of anything useful. I'm so used to Dark Souls 1 jumping. But we can't jump that anyway. <laughs> Instead, the Dragon Slayer armor just implies that it was an armor used for Dragon Slaying times and is really old and rusted. And it also depicts that um, connections to us fighting it here at the Lothric Castle, which is absolutely useless information. It's like, I know where I've been, I want to know where you've been. Which leads me to believe the armor itself was either Ornstein's like actual in the lines of duty of dragon slaying armor, or it was just a uh, armor worn by another sort of dragon slayer, like a nameless dragon slayer. Like perhaps there, like it could have been. Um, it could have been like um, someone on like the wrong side of history or something can also name Strucken but then it would have probably just said nameless huh otherwise it closely resembles uh, Ornstein's armor though it is more like lightning defensive than it most definitely more of like the armor you would have worn to go fight massive drakes. Which leads me to believe it very well could have been Ornstein's like regular armor. But that is completely irrelevant to the case scenario of these pilgrims, huh? But man, it certainly is easy to stop and wonder about it. <laughs> it's like, why was he even looking for him? Why did he abandon his post? Did he want to try to re-invite him back? Now, personally, I think yes. And I think he was probably shot down pretty harshly. And I keep wanting to look around to look for things. It's just like how my brain works. Because <laughs> I definitely know I left a few things behind. I just have a way of doing stuff like that. That is unfortunately nothing. That also looks pretty nothing. <laughs> Ugh. That was funny. I have a way of just wanting to just test that, those little details. I think that's about as much as we can really deduce down of them, of the Pilgrims of the Dark. They lived until they had no more purpose. In which case, Lothric did something to prove to them of their lack of purpose, their lack of further purpose. is why some lived, some already had for their purpose, left to them by Yuria. And that was to find unkindled ash to deliver the dark sigils to. 
but one last question really creeps into my mind at this point. So there is supposedly angels amongst the Lothric castle. And if her ashes depicts a ring that correlates her to the Lothric castle, why is it that all she wanted was to see an angel and it wasn't until the dragon heaps that she was fulfilled this. Perhaps in her eyes, there was no angel in the Lothric castle. Perhaps it was a particular kind of angel. Is my guess. But that also gives us another kind of question. If the pilgrims need like a sort of like a will or like a have a certain kind of wants to last them until they sort of transform into angels, what is it the ones that actually manage to turn into angels truly like desire that they would manage such? I think that's the real last thing that needs a real question answered, in my opinion. Otherwise, everything else really fits into place quite well. lightning arrows and that thing does not die. Wow. Notably the range to hit that sucker is kind of high. I'm trying to think if the rest of us even do anything. Actually no. need um to trade a ring out. Let's see. What's this ring again? No. this thing. Like, just to be clear. I didn't start hitting it until using the Dragon Slayer. So I wonder if it's just like the gravity catching it, or... Oh yeah, it is. That time I saw the arrow just sinking downward. These arrows might not be traveling far enough to hit it, to be honest. the contrast of the wings as a hint. See what I'm talking about? I don't think it's meant to be able to be touched without a 
Dragon Slayer one. Like something that shoots unbelievably far, basically. I swear this thing, I'm not always sure that I'm moving. I don't think that thing's moving much neither. an entire stack of the um <laughs> those are that was two stacks of the dragon slayer ones let's try a millwood and keep in mind I'm using the hawk ring it's still not reaching this sucker. That's crazy. I was hoping to catch the um, healing animation they do. And yes, they have a healing animation. I have a... Sniper's crossbow? Yes. Still does not reach. Just absolutely crazy that the limitation is just out of Millwood range <laughs> and can only be touched with a Dragon Slayer type. Like, bow. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> oh ho 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 ho. Oh ho 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 ho. This is a detail I believe gets overshadowed. So, this would indicate that there is a certain confirmation between Xanthus and Ula Sealman. In fact, this would have originated in Ula Seal, as well as the Xantha set. It's not an actually a thing of royalty, as much as it is just sort of a thing that was used by sorcerers. And like that, we finally got uh, more conclusive evidence to some of the topic.
actually just looked this up, but Xanthus actually refers to yellow. Or like golden sort of orange. Of like a sort of like a brightness. So it's not actually a place for Xanthus. It's a thing for Xanthus. And this strengthens the idea that Xanthus uh, as a in general thing gets associated not just for how it looks, but also for the Ulysseal incident and the Abyss. I've had a particular sort of realization as to what the main differences might be between the Pilgrim Angels and the angels that served here in Lothric Castle, or the Winged Knights, as they sometimes may be called. And I think the main difference is where they come from. There's the Pilgrim Angels, like they're in Dredge Heap, or Dreaded Heap. Why did I say Dredge? Ugh, in Dreaded Heap. And then there's the there's the angels that serve here, which are more not from the pilgrims is the main thing. But further into detail, I think we're safe to assume that one would be oriented with this, the light soul, and the others would be oriented from beings of the dark soul. As in, I think the pilgrims are still oriented enough with human beings, and their history, descendants of the dark soul, the pygmies, and the Winged Knights probably more closely associated with descendants of Gwyn and his kingdoms and the Light Soul. It's so simple, but it's like I'm sure a lot of people easily miss that fact. Otherwise, um, let's see here. is a particular area to note. I think it's actually an elevator this way. And any use of a bonfire is a mistake. There's a thing here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But, um, let's see. So, it would be this one. Perhaps they are at 
certain odds against each other. Now, what is that? That's just a statue on the thing. That is. Okay. In fact, if you look down that way, if you are down that way, you'll see barricades, you'll see guards stationed back and ready for ambush and patrolling it. Almost as if they are at odds against each other. I am most actually half inclined to agree that that is uh, in fact a thing. Something down this. It looks like you could just drop down this and then drop down there, but I don't think I've actually tried running around on this. Doesn't look like there's as much fun of luxury right there. But it is a curious point. Why would the angels be guarding that part? Part of the idea was that Lothric turned his back on the way of light and that he experimented on angels. And you can even see, um, a more angelic sort of decorated, like, individual down below in this, inside of here, which is actually in the Grand Archives. In, like, a cage blurred with, like, feathers, uh, dead. As well as all of the littered feathers in the actual throne room for the Lothric Castle. Which does set a lot of peculiar tones and points. shard is here? I'm honestly not too sure. To be honest though, I never actually, um, that... That's not that. Where they actually came from? to make use of it. I want to say that's like the nature of it. Still existing Lothric Knights. I think that could very well be the case. 